Hey everyone, welcome to Just Riffing. I'm Eric Walpole, and today we're going to be talking about my favorite subject, songwriting. So today we're going to talk about songwriting in terms of the major scale and how you can use the scale to help you. Let's take a C major scale, for instance. It's a key signature that has no sharps, no flats, just the musical alphabet, starting from C. So I'm starting here at the eighth fret, just to play through the scale really quickly. And that's a one octave C major scale, starting from C and ending on C. So if we go through that again, and we name the notes that we just played, we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then you're back to C again. So you can refer to each of those notes of the scale as their note name or their letter name, or you can also refer to them as their scale degrees which means C would be 1, scale degree 1, D would be scale degree 2, E would be scale degree 3, F is 4, G5, A6, B7, and then you're back to 1 at C again. So, how can this help you write songs? Well, there's a formula that you can use to build chords out of each note in the scale. Right now, we're going to build triads, or three note chords, out of each note in the scale. Okay, so if you start from C, we form the C major triad by going from C to E, and then G. That's scale degrees 1, 3, and 5. So you're skipping 2 and 4 and you've got C, E, G, which makes up C major triad, which if you find those notes everywhere on the fretboard, that's a really great exercise to practice. And you can see that that triad is the core of the chords that you've probably been playing all your life, where you have a regular C major chord in the open position. It's got C, E, G, and then another C and E on top of it to round it out. Same thing with the C major bar chord. You got C, G, C, E, and then G and C. And same thing up here. So that's the C major triad, starting from C in the C major scale. And just a quick recap, we have C, E, and G. And how did we get that? We went from scale degrees 1 to 3 to 5. And if you play them together, you've got a C major triad, which you could technically replace with any of the C major chords that you already know. And you can do the same for every single note within the major scale. So let's go through them really slowly. We already have C, E, G, which is 1, 3, 5. Now if we start on D, we're going to use the same pattern. So we start on D and work our way through the C major scale from D. And we'll skip one note. So we're skipping over E and we're going straight to F. And then we're going to skip over G and go straight to A. So if you can hear that, you've got a minor triad there. So this is a D, made, D minor triad, excuse me. Again, you can find those in multiple areas on the neck. Really great exercise. And you can use your normal open position D minor, bar chords, to substitute for the triad. If you keep going through the C major scale in this way, you'll find that each note has its own particular quality of triad. So if you start on C and build a triad from there, you have a major triad. If you start on D and build a triad from there, you've got the D minor quality triad. And then if you start on E, it's gonna be another minor triad. 
And remember, just the formula is to just play one of the notes of the scale and then skip one as you go down the scale and go to the next one. And then skip one and go to the next one. So there's another minor quality triad. So that's an E minor. And then starting from F, that's a major. Starting from G, or the fifth scale degree, that's another G major, major quality triad. Starting from the sixth, it's going to be a minor quality. Starting from the seventh, it's going to be a diminished quality triad. So that's B diminished. And then that's it. Then you're back to the one, which is C, which is C, E, G, C major. So these triads are what makes up the chords that most of you probably already know, like all of these bar chords, major and minor bar chords, or these open position chords. So what I'm suggesting here is that you can take each of the chords we just went through or each of the triads we just went through from the C major scale and use them in your own particular progression. For example, C, E, G is the first triad we went over. So you would call that the one triad. When we built a triad starting from D within the C major scale, we found a D minor triad, right? So that's the second chord of the scale. And then the third chord is the E minor. And then you have the four chord, which is the F. F major, G major is the next one. A minor is the sixth. B diminished is the seventh. And then you're back to the one. So you can use each of those chord qualities to build your own progressions. Um, so for example, some of the most popular progressions go from one to four to five. You've definitely heard this many times before. So that would mean we can substitute a chord for the C major triad and we would substitute C major. And that's our one chord. For the four chord, that's an F major. So now you can substitute F major chord for the four. And then G is the fifth scale degree, and that's major as well. So if you play a G major chord, substituting for the G major triad, you now have your three chords of the one, four, five progression. So the one is C, the four is F, and the five is G. So you've heard this before, definitely. Or maybe in a blues context, you've heard Another common chord progression is one, five, six, four. So that would be C, G, A minor, F. Check this one out. Another example is two, five, one. The two is minor and the five and one are major. So in the context of C major, you have a D minor, a G major, and then a C major. So you have.
You can go on and on with all these different types of popular chord progressions, um, but the key is to figure out which ones you like best and how you can organize those in a particular way that best suits your sound and what you're going for. Maybe you experiment with one, four, five progressions like C, F, and G, but maybe you change up the amount of times or amount of measures you might play each chord for. Um, or maybe you play a two, five, one, and you do the same thing, or you change up your strumming pattern, you layer uh, some nice melodies on top of it. You can do all sorts of things to um, create something new. You can also combine popular chord progressions. Like you can take the one, five, six, four, and combine that with the a one, five, four. And you can have this longer progression and that's actually the progression for the Beatles tune, Let It Be. So that's um, C, G, A minor, F, C, G, and then F. And back to the one. So you can do any number of things with these chord progressions. The main thing is to understand this theory so that you know, maybe you're not using this method all the time, but if you're in a, a spot where you're having trouble coming up with something new and you know your keys, you know your key signatures, you know the notes within that scale of that key, and you know your triads, and you know the quality of those triads within that scale, you can come up with something really nice. So, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to write songs by using the major scale, and I hope it helps. So. I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you next time on Just Riffing. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe if you like this video. Take care, everyone.